Ready. Fight. DJ91. Hello everybody, this is DJ91. And in this video, I'm about to do a full analysis on the whole Drake versus Michael Jackson comparison. Since 2021, there has been a lot of debate about who's really the bigger artist, the king of pop or the six god. Whichever side you on is okay. People are entitled to their opinion, but let's really take an in-depth look on their catalogs to see who's bigger. Just like how y'all like to bring up career stats, awards, accolades, and rings when comparing LeBron to MJ, we're going to do the same thing right here, starting with Michael Jackson. And if you're Team Drake, you might want to hold your breath on this one because I'm about to cook. Michael Jackson's music career spans at least four decades. Started with his brothers in a group called the Jackson Five. Their first album came out in 1969. He was 11 years old at the time. Out the gate, the group had four straight number one hits on the Billboard chart. Even at a very young age, as the baby of the group, Michael was also the star of the group. During his time with the Jackson 5, his solo career would begin to launch. He had dropped his first album, Got To Be There, in 1972 at the age of 14, which produced two top five hits, Rockin' Robin and the title track, Got To Be There. Later that same year, he dropped his second album called Ben, and the single, Ben, was his first number one hit. At the age of 14, how much people who have been in the music industry can say they had a number one hit that early in their life? Not much. That made him the third youngest solo artist to have a number one hit behind Stevie Wonder and Donny Osmond. Michael Jackson during this time became a teen pop star. Despite the hits, he didn't have the record sales to back it up. The first four albums were a flop. Motown Records had a hard time selling Michael Jackson to the masses, but the late 70s would begin an upward trajectory for his career. Him along with the Jackson 5 had already left Motown Records and then signed with Epic Records. With the new label, he met producer Quincy Jones, and the rest was history. In 1979, he dropped his fifth album, Off the Wall. This album would be his breakthrough album. It peaked at number three on the Billboard chart, went nine times platinum, and spawned two number one hits, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough and Rock With You, and also won a Grammy. He was 21 years old at the time with already three number one hits under his belt as a solo artist. This was a prelude of what was to come of Michael Jackson in the 80s that would separate him from everyone else in the world of music forever. And of course, he was off to a bit of a slow start in the 80s. Just a little duet with Paul McCartney, The Girl Is Mine, which almost reached number one. But 1982, Michael would plant a seed that would make earth-shattering history. In November that year, he dropped his sixth album called Thriller, which commercially was a slow burner at first, with The Girl Is Mine being the only single released at the time, but once 1983 came around, it was game over for everybody. The atomic bomb had exploded. The second single, Billie Jean, was a number one hit, and the album started selling like crazy. It spread like wildfire. As a matter of fact, it spread like the coronavirus. At its peak, it sold over a million copies worldwide per week. This was also his first number one album, and the album topped the Billboard 200 for 37 non-consecutive weeks which is a record that has yet to be broken and probably will never be broken since it's been 40 years. Thriller was the first album to be named best-selling album of the year for two years straight. He outsold everyone with just one album for two consecutive years. Bad to bet. Within this time frame, the album went double diamond, which is 20 times platinum. No streaming, no internet, just physical copies in the form of CDs, vinyls, and cassettes. Before his death, the album went 28 times platinum. Now it's 34 times platinum. The following single, Beat It, was also a number one hit. By this time, Michael was 25 years old with six number one hits, a double diamond selling album under his belt, and had just became not only the biggest pop star in the world, but literally the most famous person in the history of mankind. Some of you youngsters do not have a clue how big this guy was. The Michael Jackson hype was real. Following Thriller, he would go on a bit of a hiatus, but the Thriller train just wouldn't stop. Despite not putting out an album for six years, he was still the biggest pop star in the world. Because Thriller kept on selling millions of copies, it just wouldn't stop. In 1988, he would return with his seventh album called Bad. This would be his second number one album. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 2.25 million copies. Not album equivalent units, copies. You know, physical copies that people spent $9.99 over the counter for in stores. 
the album had produced five consecutive number one hit singles, which was a record at the time, which has been tied by Katy Perry in 2010 with her Teenage Dream album. Bad would go on to go six times platinum in less than 12 months and ultimately 11 times platinum. By this time, Michael was 30 years old with 11 number one hits under his belt. By the end of the decade, Michael was named Artist of the Decade, and the competition he had in the 80s was elite. He was up against Madonna, Bill Collins, Prince, Whitney Houston, Bruce Springsteen, Billy Joel, Lionel Richie. These guys were no joke. Those were some juggernauts that I just named, who are one of the top selling artists of all time, and Michael still outsold all of them by a long shot. Michael Jackson's prime did not stop there. Even in the 90s, he was still the biggest pop star. He dropped his eighth album called Dangerous in 1991, which was the year I was born, by the way. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 326,000 copies, which although was pretty low numbers by his standards, the weekly album sales had managed to increase in the following weeks and went platinum in less than a month. The album would go quadruple platinum after just a few months. The lead single, Black or White, was a number one hit. By this time, Michael was 32 years old with 12 number one hits under his belt. In 1995, Michael would drop his ninth album, His Story, Past, Present, and Future, Book One. This was released as a double album, where Disc One contained his greatest hits and Disc Two contained new tracks. So it was a greatest hits slash studio album. Also, the album sales would be doubled due to the fact that it was a multi-disc album. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with 391,000 copies sold in its first week. Months later, it would go five times platinum after selling two and a half million copies. It would ultimately go eight times platinum. The third single off the album, You Are Not Alone, was a number one hit. It would be the last number one hit he would ever achieve. By this time, Michael was 36 years old with 13 number one hits under his belt and still selling records. After this album, he would go on a six-year hiatus until 2001 when he dropped his 10th and final album called Invincible. Although his popularity had started to decline, the album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 363,000 copies, proving to the world he was still that dude and can hang with the rest of them. Michael now had a number one album in at least three different decades. The album would go double platinum in just a few months. Although he wouldn't top the charts with the singles again, he was still able to adapt with the times and crank out more hits. He went from working with Quincy Jones to working with Rodney Jerkins, aka Dark Child, who was one of the biggest producers at the time. Rock My World was a top 10 hit and Butterflies was a top 15 hit. This marked the end of his legendary run. By this time, Michael was 43 years old with 13 number one hits, 26 top 10 hits, 13 Grammys, a few hundred million copies sold worldwide, and the best-selling album of all time in the pre-digital era. All right, Team Drake, you can breathe now. Now let's get into his catalog. This might not be a lopsided battle, we'll see. Drake's music career so far spans at least two decades. He started off as an actor before music, so just like Michael, he's also been on TV since a very young age. He was an up-and-coming actor trying to make it on the rap scene. While acting on a show called Degrassi, he released his first mixtape called Room for Improvement in 2006 at the age of 20 while unsigned. The following year, he would release a second mixtape called Comeback Season. With this mixtape, he started to make a little noise. Following this mixtape, he met producer Noah Shabib, aka 40, which is just like when Michael met Quincy. Meeting 40 would be huge for Drake going forward. February 2009, his third mixtape, So Far Gone, was released, and the rest was history. Not only was the mixtape critically acclaimed, it would be the beginning of his illustrious music career. Off the mixtape spawned two major hit singles, Best I Ever Had, which reached number two on the Hot 100, and Successful, which was a top 20 hit. Following this newfound success, major labels were in a bidding war with Drake, but he ended up signing with Lil Wayne's Young Money Entertainment, which was an imprint of Cash Money Records at the time, with distribution by Universal Motown. Drake would make more noise in 2009. He dropped another single called Forever, which features Kanye, Lil Wayne, and Eminem. The single was a top 10 hit. Not gonna lie, Drake had a very solid rookie season. He was 23 years old, with two top 10 hits, and a song with Ye, Weezy, and M on it. This was a prelude of what was to come of Drake in the next decade. In 2010, he dropped his first album, Thank Me Later, 
It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 447,000 copies, which was very impressive numbers for a rapper's debut album. It went platinum in a month and would ultimately go quadruple platinum. The first single, Over, was a top 20 hit. The second single, Find Your Love, was a top 5 hit. The third single, Miss Me, was a top 15 hit. And the final single, Fancy, was a top 30 hit. Also a forgotten fact, that year Drake had a number one hit as a featured artist on What's My Name with Rihanna. By this time, Drake was 24 years old with a few hits and a number one album under his belt. He was just getting started. 2011, he would drop his second album, Take Care, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with 631,000 copies sold in the first week. The album would go platinum in two months and ultimately go eight times platinum. The album would also win a Grammy. The album had seven singles with four of them being top 20 hits and two of them being top 10 hits. By this time, Drake was 25 sitting on 25 mil. Also with two number one albums and a Grammy under his belt. In 2012, Drake became a label owner and started OVO Records with 40, which operated as a subsidiary label of Warner Records, while still signed to Young Money. In 2013, he would drop his third album, Nothing Was The Same. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 658,000 copies. The album went platinum in just a few months and would ultimately go six times platinum. The first single, Started From The Bottom, was a top 10 hit. The second single, Hold On We're Going Home, was a top 5 hit. The third single, All Me, was a top 20 hit. And the other four singles didn't even crack the top 50. By this time, Drake was 27 years old, with three number one albums. 2015 would be a monster year for Drake. He would drop a surprise mixtape in February called If You're Reading This It's Too Late, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 535k album equivalent units. This would be the beginning of the streaming era, where streams counted towards sales, with 1,500 streams equaling one copy sold. Also, 92% of the mixtape's first week sales were traditional album sales. The mixtape went platinum in six months and would ultimately go quadruple platinum. But no hits really materialized. Only one of the songs off the mixtape managed to crack the top 50. However, it was at this time where Drake finally became the biggest rapper on the planet. Before this, Eminem still had the number one spot, while Drake was still in second place when he dropped his first three albums. But 2015, Drake would surpass Eminem and was now on his way to becoming the biggest artist in the world. In the summer, he would drop a non-album single called Hotline Bling, which reached number two on the Hot 100. Later that year, he dropped a collab mixtape with Future called What A Time To Be Alive. This mixtape topped the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 375k album equivalent units. The mixtape went platinum in six months. The lead single, Jumpman, was almost a top 10 hit. By this time, Drake was 29 years old with five number one albums, but still no number one hit as a lead artist. Six years into his career, he had yet to achieve that elusive number one hit that he had been chasing for a while. So far, the only number one hit he had was a feature, but that would finally change in 2016. He dropped his fourth album called Views in April of that year. This album would turn out to be the best-selling album of his career. It topped the Billboard 200 with first week sales of over 1 million album equivalent units, with 85% of the album's first week sales being traditional album sales, making him the fourth rapper to do 1 million the first week. Eminem, 50 Cent, and Lil Wayne have done that before. The album went four times platinum by the end of the year, it would ultimately go eight times platinum. The first single off the album, One Dance, would end up being Drake's first number one hit. Finally, at this point in his career, Drake can say he finally has a number one hit for real. That same year, he also had a number one hit as a feature with Rihanna on the song called Work. By this time, Drake was 30 years old with six number one albums and three number one hits and was just starting to break streaming records. In 2017, he dropped a mixtape called More Life, which topped the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 505k album equivalent units, with nearly half of the first week sales being pure album sales. The mixtape would go double platinum by the end of the year and would ultimately go four times platinum. The mixtape had five singles with three of them cracking the top 10. By this time, Drake was 31 years old with seven number one albums, more streaming records broken, but still looking to add more number one hits to his catalog. In 2018, he would start the year off with the release of a two-track EP called Scary Hours. One of the tracks was God's Plan, no pun intended. This single would top the Hot 100, making it Drake's fourth number one hit. 
This single would be added to his next album, Scorpion, which was released in the summer. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 732k album equivalent units. The album went triple platinum by the end of the year and would ultimately go seven times platinum. This album would contain the most number one hits out of his entire catalog. The next two singles, Nice For What and In My Feelings were number one hits. That's three number one hits for the year off one album. Very, very impressive. The album also had a Michael Jackson feature on it too. Interesting. That same year, he also gained another number one hit as a feature on Sickle Mode with Travis Scott. By this time, Drake was 32 years old with eight number one albums, seven number one hits, and that would be his last album released in the 2010s. By the end of 2019, Drake was named Artist of the Decade by Spotify and had the Guinness World Record for longest streak on the Billboard Hot 100 with 431 consecutive weeks, which lasted from 2009 to 2017, which is crazy to be on the Hot 100 for eight years straight. That's a monumental achievement. Now to this decade, Drake would maintain his status as the biggest artist in the world. In 2020, he dropped a mixtape called Dark Lane Demo Tapes, which was a flop, just a bunch of unreleased songs and SoundCloud tracks. It debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 223k album equivalent units. It failed to even reach gold status, but this mixtape was just a compilation, so there was no expectation for it to do well. However, the lead single, Two C Slide, was a number one hit making it Drake's eighth number one hit. In 2021, Drake would receive another Artist of the Decade Award, this time by Billboard. The award was delayed by a year due to COVID-19. That same year, he put out more bags of hits. He released an EP called Scary Hours 2 with three tracks, What's Next, Wants and Needs, and Lemon Pepper Freestyle. All three tracks would make the one, two, three slots on the Hot 100, which is crazy. Later that year, he put out his sixth album, Certified Lover Boy, it debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 613k album equivalent units. The album has gone triple platinum. The first single, Way Too Sexy, was a number one hit. The second single, Girls Like Girls, was a number two hit on the Hot 100. The third single, Knife Talk, was a top five hit. All the tracks from the entire album charted within the top 40 of the Hot 100, which was history. By this time, Drake was 35 years old with 10 number one hits and 10 number one albums under his belt. This is when the whole Drake-Michael Jackson debate even started. And for what reason, I don't know, because at this time he wasn't even one away from Michael yet. So beat it. In 2022, Drake would keep the hits coming and flood the market. He started off the year receiving a number one hit as a feature on Wait For You with Future and Thames, making it his 11th number one hit. He then put out his seventh album, Honestly Never Mind. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 204k album equivalent units, which turned out to be the lowest first week sales of his career, but it had nothing to do with age, him falling off, or being washed. He was trying something new by doing EDM music for this album. People shitted on this album at first, but the critics said otherwise and praised the album. People would eventually come around and start liking the album realizing they had reacted too quickly instead of digesting the music. The album would go platinum. The album would also have a couple tracks that charted within the top 10. But one of the singles, Jimmy Cooks with 21 Savage, which was the final track on the album, was the number one hit, since it didn't sound like the rest of the album, which was a good strategy by Drake. Following this, he would end up dropping a collab album with 21 Savage called Her Loss. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with 404k album equivalent units and would go on to go double platinum. Although the album failed to produce any number one hits, eight tracks had managed to chart within the top 10 of the Hot 100. The first single, Rich Flex, nearly topped the Hot 100, reaching number two. By this time, Drake was 36 years old with 12 number one hits and 12 number one albums under his belt. In 2023, Drake would drop his now latest album for all the dogs. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 402k album equivalent units. Since then, the album has gone platinum with over 1 million units sold. Thanks to this album, the Drake-Michael Jackson debate would catch fire again. Before the album was released, one of the singles, Slime You Out with SZA, was the number one hit on the charts, which tied MJ's record with 13 number one hits. And the fourth single, First Person Shooter with J. Cole, was also a number one hit. Even though this is the track where Drake said, I'm one away from Michael, beat it. He ended up passing Michael with this single. As of now, Drake is 37 years old with 14 number one hits, 76 top 10 hits, 13 number one albums, 
five Grammys, and 170 million records sold. Not gonna lie, Drake is on a legendary run. And as far as music history, he's already one of the greats and is still killing it. He got more number one hits than Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Bruno Mars, The Weeknd, Usher, Cardi B, Adele, Justin Timberlake, Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Madonna, Whitney Houston, Beyonce, and Eminem. I'm also a Drake fan, and as a Canadian myself, I'm happy to see a rapper coming out of this country and from the city of Toronto achieving the awards and accolades that he's achieved. And I believe he's without a doubt the best hit-making rapper of all time. And with the uncertain future of today's rap music, we'll never see another Drake again in our lifetime. But let's be real here, he'll never be bigger than Michael Jackson, ever. You know why? Here's why. He's not even close. Michael has over a half a billion records sold and Drake has yet to break the 200 million mark. He might have more slaps than the Beatles, but he ain't sold as much as them. And also, let's break down the number one hits. Yeah, Drake got more number one hits. He got 14, Michael got 13, blah, blah, blah. But Drake needed features for most of his number ones. Slime You Out is a whack song and would have been more whack if SZA wasn't on it. It only went number one because of streams. I will acknowledge the fact that he's been able to get five number one hits without a feature, and I do commend him for that. But every other time, Drake either needed features or to be a feature to get number one hits. Michael, on the other hand, didn't need anybody. Only one of his number ones was a duet. Every other number one he had was by himself. Drake also needed big names for his number ones. He needed Rihanna, Travis Scott, 21 Savage, and Future. Michael didn't need anyone to top the charts. And not to mention the fact that Rihanna, who also has 14 number one hits, did that in a shorter time span. Where were the Michael Jackson comparisons with that? Also, Mariah Carey, who has the record for most number one hits, didn't even get Michael Jackson comparisons. And she sold more records than Drake as well. If he hasn't even surpassed Mariah Carey, how does that qualify him as being bigger than Michael Jackson? How? Explain that to me. Also, it's different eras. Michael's era was just CDs, vinyls, cassettes, TV, and radio. With radio, Drake had digital downloading, streaming, and social media to his advantage, which has made it easier for artists to get more exposure and get more top 5, top 10 hits on the Hot 100 chart. However, here's where Drake scores some points in my opinion. He never had a slow start to his career. Out the gate, he was a platinum selling chart topping artist and did it consistently for almost 15 years now, while MJ didn't start going platinum until he released his fifth album. Also, Drake is a label owner so he was able to control his destiny more, while MJ never took that step in his career. And like I mentioned before about Drake being from Toronto, he reps his city to the fullest, and it was because of him why more people wanted to travel to Toronto. He was once reportedly responsible for 5% of the city's annual tourism economy. Rarely do you ever see any artists have that kind of impact on the city where they come from. But all in all, that doesn't take away from the fact that Michael is still the bigger artist. No shade to those who disagree, but you gotta do your research here. Like I said, I'm born in 1991. I was finishing high school when Drake first came out, so I've been able to witness his progress and ascension in real time. For MJ, I had to do some research since I was born by the time the Dangerous album came out. Yet he was still a household name during my childhood. And to be honest, I didn't really appreciate the greatness of Michael Jackson until he was gone. After digging and doing my research, I've realized how much of a big deal he was. I even had some high school friends at the time who had to educate me that Michael was that dude, even while Michael was still alive. For those who still feel like Drake is bigger than Michael Jackson, then you gotta consider these things while comparing the two. One of these artists invented the moonwalk, the other one didn't. One of these artists has done the Super Bowl, the other one hasn't. One of these artists has their own video game, the other one doesn't. One of these artists had people fainting at his concerts, the other one didn't. One of these artists has the best-selling album of all time, and the other one doesn't. Period. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Feel free to share your thoughts and opinions below. I'm done, and I rest my case. Michael wins. <laughs> DJ 91.